Iowa State program as we are set here for the opening kick and we are under way again the wind right now blowing somewhat from your left to your right as you look at it so here is Baylor played back Hannah Augustine we should talk about the twins that got cut off by Edwards and then brought and cleared it out. Both teams play a pretty possession oriented style of play in Michelle Leonard's first year here. New style, new coaching staff, you know, definitely pushing some changes to the Baylor Bears, but will retain that possession oriented style of play. And here come the Bears right down the middle. Euler served it in. Top of the box, rejected. Now a reset. Here's Hannah Augustine. Down into the corner, Jenna Patterson. Played it in, Broughton kicked it out, and we have a corner right away. Should tell you, you know, uh, Baylor also played Iowa this year mm -hmm. in a match that ended nil-nil, but it was a match where Baylor was in control. And now Patterson will play this in. That was easily kicked out by Edwards. Iowa State looking to make a counterattack. Good defending there by Pratt, you know, just being able to force that ball back and require Baylor to reset defensively. You can see there's a pretty strong uh, sun in the Baylor Bears defensive third that they're looking into here in the opening few minutes as the sun is setting. So Baylor Patterson pushes it back and Jada gave chase to it and it will be a throw in. Uh, two, uh, a pair of twins on the field for Baylor, Hallie and Hannah Augustine. And then of course for Iowa State, Jada and Jasmine Colbert. Play back to Edwards, chips it into the six almost, and it is fielded quickly by Lauren Trawick. Interesting, the goalie for the Baylor Bears. He's got 47 saves this year. He's had a couple of shutouts, but uh, five foot five, relatively. You know, I remember Maddie, Very athletic. Maddie Job, who played for Iowa State sure. several years ago, but she wasn't five five. Uh, nevertheless, um, she can fly around. Uh, very athletic. Trey yep, Treywick is very yep. athletic and, yep. and reads the ball well. You know, some of the things that we talk about with Jordan Silkowitz for Iowa State is just the athleticism and the ability to put themselves in a good position within that box. So reading reading the play is pretty critical, and I think Treywick does a nice job of that as well. I think what both teams, uh, if you had someone scouting them and it's someone who had scouted them the entire season is Edwards. Lays it down for Emma. Jada, Gabby Mueller on her back, and it will be. Jada putting herself in a really good position of just maintaining um, her body position between the opposing player and the ball. Here you can see it got touched there, but just making sure that she put herself in that position required Baylor to foul in a good, in a good position for the Cyclones with an offensive play. All right. Sent in and blocked, didn't get, and then a goal! By Mira Emma, what a shot! Well, she was waiting for the actual initial service. It came back and Mira Emma gets in and scores for Iowa State. So here's the kick deflected by the wall, but what a beautiful shot. You can see Mira Emma getting her body positioning over that ball with power. There's nothing that Trawick was gonna be able to do. So Mira Emma, her 14th, or excuse me, her 11th career goal, her third goal of this season. And there she is, the senior midfielder for the Cyclones. Now, Baylor tried to go direct. 
Iowa State out in front, one to nothing. Jada on the turn, goes down. And here come the Cyclones. Pratt goes down. And that will be a free kick for Baylor. I think both feet just kind of got tangled up. You see uh, Salome Pratt, one of Iowa State's biggest weapons this season, has 12 career goals. Well, and you can see that she actually has a brace on her right hand. That stemmed from the West Virginia game. There was an injury and kind of went, I wouldn't say unattended to necessarily, but just trying to play through it. And it turns out that she did have um, a fracture. So playing playing with a, a brace on her hand, but you know, thankfully she can still get some good minutes. All right, Augustine. Colbert's on her. Kaylee Abels. There's a woman who hardly ever comes out for Baylor. And if there's one thing you should know about her is her motor goes nonstop during a match. Nonstop, fifth gear. That's how she plays. So in these opening minutes, both teams have some pretty, pretty significant turnovers. Good look into space, just not just a little bit too far for Olivia Edwards to run onto, but good idea by Lauren Hernandez. Augustine will play it in. And Edwards heads it out. So Augustine will throw it in back to Abel's for a reset. So Pratt getting in a position to force Baylor to play here on the left side, the near side. Edwards. McConnell had it briefly. And now here is Obar leaving it on the far side. And so you can see that Baylor does very intentionally look to switch the point of attack and one of the things that Iowa State is doing is, is forcing that defensive line even from the offensive players. And that's what you saw there with Pratt. There's the speed by Colbert. Jada Colbert. McConnell. Pratt working to dig it out. And it is Gabby Mueller who comes up with it. She's only 5'1", but her play is much taller than that. Top of the 18. Good effort by Eva Steckelberg for Iowa State getting back defensively. Patterson plays it in. Bounced. Coyman kicked out. Pratt comes from behind and disrupts. Mueller, as we said, 5-1, plays. Effective, very effective. Very intentional shots on goal, lots of shots on goal. Able always to uh, navigate through traffic as well. So here's Augustine, the freshman. And again, Augustine. Mira Emma, the goal scorer. Should tell you, Baylor is coming off uh, the high-low from uh, last week's action. Sure. A 3-2 to two win over Kansas in which the... He's come from behind. Yes, 88th and 90th minute goals. Vargas, as we talked about in the pre-match, had two of them. And uh, really a stirring victory that ended with a big pile of Baylor players in the middle of the field. Broughton, Mueller cut it off. 
So you can see Baylor has several players in the midfield and offensively putting that immediate pressure on the Cyclones. That's part of the way they have been effective and probably some of that new style that Coach Leonard brings to the Baylor Bears is that immediate pressure, but it's not just what's on the ball, but it's taking taking away the second option as well. Well, here's the long ball. McConnell gives chase. And that's gonna be a corner for Iowa State. Great rundown by Lauren McConnell. You can see her speed on that. And, and Lauren has battled some injuries here this year as well, and it's nice to see her on the field. No question. Has four starts this year, two career goals. So you got Mira Emma and Salome Pratt. So having two people on the ball offers a short option. This one's going right into the six and headed out. Now Baylor looks to counter. Patterson tried to get it going west and eventually it does. But this is Edwards and she'll send it back to the goalie who has faced more shots than any goalie in the Big 12 Conference. And some of them are highlight reel type efforts. You There's Merrill. You don't see that very often where it's turned over by Silkowitz. That could have been very dangerous and probably one of the better opportunities that Baylor would have had in front of them yet here in the opening minutes. Well, Coburg tried to get it to a teammate and Iowa State ends up with the throw in. The scrum there, C. Mueller has her distinctive ribbon in her hair. So the Iowa State Cyclones are wearing pink this evening in support of Breast, Con Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What I was saying before the goal was, if you had been scouting these teams, both uh, are looking to score more goals. Very simple. Yes, yes. And you're right. There is a. The reference to the bow and the hair is what made me think of the uh, the awareness that the Cyclones are displaying here this evening. Well, here we go. No one really got to that one. And it's going to head out. So Olivia Edwards will take this, her 42nd game and 37th start as an Iowa Stater. Into Pratt, surrounded by green jerseys. Nice job to get it back to Edwards. Well, and Pratt, one of the more technical players for Iowa State from France, one of the things that you know, she's accustomed to doing is just that very intricate um, touch on the ball under, I shouldn't say maybe under pressure, that's probably the newness that she's experiencing here in the Big 12, but just very technical. And here's McConnell. Trawick's gonna get there first. Baylor looks to turn, kick back to Abels. Trying to slot up there for Patterson, cut off. And now Baylor again, Jenna Patterson, big goal scorer for Dallas Baptist. Nice cross, there was no one there to get it. It was that kind of cross that Baylor scored on in uh, their last game. It was a beautiful setup that allowed that goal to be so pronounced. 
Well, you see the battle there between Stuckelberg and Mueller. Really, Mueller is not in possession of that ball right there, but was looking to force that contact from behind. So there is a conversation right now between one of the Bayer, Baylor players and the referee. Yeah, I'm talking with uh, Ashley Merrill. As we said, another one of those uh, Dallas Baptist transfers from Michelle Leonard. There she is, junior from Frisco. Three goals scored this year, including one against Kansas. Has 35 career goals if you count everything in her collegiate career. And it looks like uh, Sokowitz. Have a delay here, I think Michelle the time, Leonard. The time has stopped on the clock. Leonard. A little unusual to have this kind of conversation, extended conversation. The loss that Baylor then suffered after winning uh, that come from behind victory over Kansas. The Bears suffered the loss versus Kansas State with uh, a last minute penalty in the box that was called. And it, the penalty kick was well done and resulted in Baylor kind of having a falling a, a little more down after that height of heights emotionally against the Jayhawks. This one's in. Into the box. Not necessarily cleared the way that Adams was hoping to put direction on that ball, but Baylor will yield a corner. When you see uh, Vargas there down by the far pole as they get set for this corner. And it's in. Punched out by Silkowitz. Played out. A chance there for Jada, and here she goes. She's got Pratt on the near side. It's able to keep her feet, but not effective in sending that through with Baylor getting back defensively. <laughs> Iowa State will get it now. Baylor, a team in transition because there are changes in the way that Michelle Leonard wants to do things over the previous regime. Well, and you'll always have that when there's coaching changes. Every program experiences that. You know, at Dallas Baptist, you know, she's got three players who started here from Dallas Baptist who started here tonight against Iowa State. And what she said, you know, when you have a great D2 program, mm -hmm. not a good one, but a great one, you've got a, some D1 players on your roster. Absolutely. No doubt about it. And uh, I think that has shown through this year with the play of that trio. Mueller. And here comes Baylor. Plenty of room. Vargas didn't get to get there as it was rejected.
as we said earlier in the day, you know, if you were here at four o'clock, the wind was blowing left to right at a good 20 to 25 miles an hour with no break. No, and it was not forgiving. Now it has, now it has uh, dissipated somewhat. Augustine. Coyman. She wow. leaves it. Nice Beautiful dish. Play. Into the box and a goal. That's very classic. Baylor looking great dish down into the in line and looks to put that right into the middle with more players to crash the box. And here we see the replay. Nice dish, split the defenders. And that's and Vargas. So we pitched her up a little bit in the pregame. Yeah, you can see. She's and there she is. And in the right place at the right time. M well, Michelle Leonard said, uh, and, and I have to say, in the last Baylor game, after scoring two like that against Kansas, <clears throat> not much was heard from her through a good part of the contest. And then right at, you know, where she needed to be, where ne she needed to be, uh, she's there. And, uh, you know, it's uh, a demonstration of her innate soccer nature. Some of that you can't coach. When you talked about her IQ, and that's that's part of it is, you know, you practice those plays, but it's the, it's the, how do I say this? You know, it's really the, um, it's, it's up to the players to be problem solvers on the field and recognize where there are openings and where there are opportunities. And, and when you crash the end line like that, you do create separation, create passing channels to be able to play into the box. But it requires the right dish, the right speed. Splitting the defenders is what made that play happen. Um, so, you know, very effective. And I think that's a kind of goal that Michelle Leonard appreciates, one that was done with purpose and uh, part of the kind of soccer she wants her team to play. So we're at 1-1 now as Vargas, the equalizer after Mira Emma's goal. Merrill. You can see how important it is for Baylor to stretch this field. Well, here comes Patterson, but she's run off the ball that time. Iowa State really just giving the ball up too much. Too many turnovers. And here goes Augustine. Vargas was running in the box. Pushed over by Merrill. That shot attempt by Mueller is blocked. And Baylor is asserting itself here. After tying the game, pulling the Bears level at 1-1. Here's Augustine again. Good positioning by Edwards for yes. Iowa State. So Iowa State will throw it in here. So Vargas, it's her fourth game. That was her fourth goal. There's kind of a Although she is much more than that, there's a term called poacher, which is someone who always is around the goal and in play to get a shot. Sure. Yeah. You, you, yep. Also heard cherry picker, or, you know, just looking to crash that box. But that was a well set up play by attacking the inline. That's what created that for Baylor. In for the Cyclones, Maddie Brandt. A graduate transfer from Maidstone, England. McConnell tried to push it through to Hernandez. And that was uh, a little a dangerous play by dangerous by Baylor defense. The center back is Hallie Augustine. 
from Flower Mount, Texas. We have a far former cyclone from Flower Mound as well. Several former cyclones from the Texas area. Okay, Pratt down in the corner, marked by Abels. And Baylor will get the goal kick. Yeah, Pratt had time there to take a touch and get her hips around to be able to get that cross into play. Those are gonna be the little things that Iowa State does need to do better. Uh, there's a lot of bounding down there. And then Pratt on the turn, contested. Still on it. Nicely done by Pratt. That's where you can see her footwork. You saw two Baylor players. Mueller was in there. They are, Baylor is contesting every possession down there. And not just with one player, but oftentimes two people on the ball. So you're double teaming in several areas, just not giving the Cyclones any opportunity of getting, getting a couple touches on the ball. So the way that you correct that is then playing in one and two touch. And so you have to know where there's open space and where your players are gonna be to be able to lead them into those positions. Played in. Pratt. Puts it back. Colbert. Maddie Brandt came up and got that. And this one heads east. Traywick immediately kicks it out. And does a nice job of leading. Hannah Augustine and now Coyman. Coyman was trying to navigate getting around Pratt and ended up on the turf. And Baylor will have a kick. Kaylee Abels. That was a very interesting setup because you start with somebody off, off sides and that's what the call is here is that then a player is behind or goal side of the defense and Iowa State will get a free kick off of this. Rotten, Mueller on the turn. Back to Abels. Now down the far side, the cut in. Here's Vargas. Left it for Mueller. She kicked it back. Augustine. Augustine. Thought she might wind I up from I there. I thought so too. She had the opportunity. Obar. Pratt really needs to be careful coming from behind on that. It's going to probably not do any favors. So here's Abels. Graduate student plays it in, but there was no one from Baylor even in the six. So it's played on the bounce. Yeah, so you can be off size and as long as you don't take a step towards the ball or take a step into play, then you know, you're know you not in uh, play of the game, um, if that makes sense, I guess. And so, so I think that's more of like a decoy in that type of a position. Coyman. Still interesting. 
tried to leave it that time for Koyman. Vargas did. But now it's McConnell. Hernandez sent it eastward, nobody home. Yeah, so Pratt was offsides there, but because she didn't come in contact with the ball, play on. And Edwards will send this back to Silkowitz, who puts it right out to Brott. There's the one touch that Iowa State needs to see more of under that pressure. Header by McConnell, Pratt has it, and goes down, it will be Iowa State. We're at 1-1. Mira Emmett, the goal scorer for Iowa State. And Renetta Vargas for Baylor. Marina Suter Dorig in for the Cyclones. Pratt out. That was uh, Hallie Augustin. And now here come the Bears. Slotted through, Vargas surrounded. Now Iowa State makes the turn. And there's that speed by Colbert. Down the side, guarded by Colberg. Nicely defended. Well done by Broughton for Edwards. the Cyclones. Augustine leaves it off. Sent in by Merrill. The chase is on. Augustine to Vargas. Looks to set it up. Coyman. Top of the 18. Cleared. You can see the aggressiveness of Baylor as Abel's got Iowa State's Jasmine Colbert off the ball. Obar, Mueller, Maddie Brandt has missed most of the season but been back in there, which has been no small thing for the Iowa State back line. Nice run by Mira Emma. Mira Emma. That one was just straight up blocked by Augustine. Yeah, one touch too far. Each of these teams would be greatly aided in their attempt to make the Big 12 postseason tournament in which the top eight teams advance with a win tonight. Hernandez, here's Edwards. Broughton. Nice control by the Cyclones. Stuckelberg put it through. And here's a chance for Iowa State. McConnell. Ball went all the way through, but now Hernandez with that shot. But right at Treywick. Good pressure by Jada Colbert, forcing Augustine backwards. Now the turn by Baylor. Nice turn by Blythe Obar. And here's Vargas. Mueller. That one played in off the foot of Broughton. Eventually, she's able to uh, 
kick it away from the Iowa State goal. You know what I think is really effective in Vargas's style of play is her pressure on the back line. So with Chloe Broughton being in that, that central back position, you know, Var Vargas is is right on that central back line, whether that's Adams, whether it's Broughton, it doesn't really matter. And she'll go out here for just a few minutes, I would imagine, um, or even just to recoup here for the rest of the half. But that's what, what makes her dangerous is that pressure. Well, here's McConnell. So substitution rules now allow you to re-enter one time in each half with a total of 11 substitutions. And that'll be a foul on Hannah Reed for the Cyclones. They didn't need to foul there. It will be Abel's. Second team all Big 12 last year. Thomas got her head on it. Coinman and Brant there. And now here comes Baylor, but that was cut off by Eva Steckelberg. Here is McConnell. Tried to slot it for a crossing Jasmine Colbert. Down the far side. So Colbert. Flicked there by Sky Leach who's in the game. Well defended by Adams there, the veteran that we featured at the beginning of the game for the Cyclones. Well, both of these teams have dealt with injuries that have impacted uh, the lineups. Major players, and uh, their Cyclone goes down. Obar, I think, is the defender. This one. Play down in counterattack fashion. Here's Jada Colbert on the ball. Well defended. Baylor. Horniak. Sarah Horniak in there. Has had some big plays for the Bears this year, even though her, her playing time is uh, not what it was last year. Reed got a foot on it. Had time to control it. Baylor in the offensive third. Horniak. Headed out by Broughton. And all the way back now to Abel's. So we've talked a lot through this season just how comfortable Jordan Silkowitz is with her feet and how effective she can be. Nice ball into the feet of Jada Colbert. So here she is, Jada for McConnell. Flips it back out. Suter Dorig tried to slot it. Not successful. And here's Broughton. The center back trying to weave through a pair of green jerseys. 
didn't get there, but Maddie Brandt collects it. Mira Emma for Colbert. Jada. Will earn a corner. Great take with not a lot of field room there. Yeah, it was a good serve too by Mira Emma. Well, that's one of the things that Mira does so well in that midfield position. You can see that dish really just kind of ran out of space. Well defended, but earned a corner for the Cyclones. So a couple substitutions in for the Cyclones. A curve one, and it's a goal! Being exactly in the right place at the right time, Eva what Steckelberg. A, what a beautiful cross by, again, Mira Emma. Well, here we go. You got to be near post and far post. Here you go. And Eva Steckelberg right there for the Cyclones. So for Eva Steckelberg, in this her 52nd game. First that goal of the season. That is her first goal. Sorry, I stole your thunder. No, it's all right. I mean, it's her first goal. And coming in her 43rd start. So it's two to one here, but look out. And that one played effectively by Silkowitz. Definitely right decision by Silkowitz. You know, we saw Vargas on Baylor's goal. Games native too. Lurking from down by the, by the post. And now Eva, who's from Ames, went to Gilbert High School. And uh, now Abels will play that back. So lay a carry on that run for the Cyclones. So one of the rules too is that you can play your keeper back with your feet as a defender, uh, but they cannot pick it up with their hands. So you can head it back and they can pick it up with their hands, but they cannot kick it. Okay, here's Coyman. And the flag was up. Yep, so offsides, meaning that Coleman was behind the defense or goal side of the defense, which considers an unfair advantage offensively. So in these teams tonight, with both of these teams tonight, there are two Ames natives. One for Baylor Bears with Sophie Wilson and one for the Cyclones with Eva Stuckelberg. Well, and Abels is a hometown girl from Waco with Baylor. Okay, nice turn. Sophia Thomas. Good okay. idea, just a little bit too fast on the pitch. Hannah Reed. Yeah, you'd, you'd ideally like to bend outwards so that you're coming onto the ball towards the goal. But still, this is, not, this is a synthetic turf here in the Cyclone Sports Complex for Iowa State. And sometimes there's just a little bit more speed. Micah Beasley in for the Bears. Thomas, Emma, Suter Dorig. The flick did not get there and was rejected. Here's Thomas again, misdirected. Here's Abels. And now Baylor. Looking to pull level. Advancing, but turning it over. Bryant will send it back. Here, here comes the pressure. Iowa State doing a nice job of changing the point of attack. 
it's important that Iowa State stays consistent in their style of play in these final four minutes of the first half. Slot it up. And the ball went right past one player. But that was a beautiful combination and all it all of those passes leading up to that last ball were one touch passes and that's what Iowa State is starting to recognize in playing and how that can change the pressure from the Baylor Bears. That one didn't get through, Abel's cut it off. And here's Baylor again. Augustine kicked out Iowa State. Turns it over. There you see Matty Algy, number 10. The teammate, Micah Beasley. You know, one Baylor player that has not been out there this season is Taylor Moon, who was a marquee Big 12 player coming into this. Here's a turnover. But Iowa State is able to set it down, settle it down. And they head down to the corner. Into the box and rejected. Nice clear by Iowa State. Baylor looking to reset. And you can see both teams are very focused or very intentional in that possession-oriented game style of play. Iowa State plays There's the a scrum. lot more short. And Baylor won it. And it's left for Horniak. Plays it through. And a goal! Elizabeth Coyman, it looked like. Beautiful shot. It Difficult really was. To defend. It really was beautiful. We'll wait the replay here. 2 2, Iowa State and Baylor. And, Too uh, dangerous to leave at the top of the box. Just a really set, intentional play. And there's Elizabeth Coyman out of San Jose, California. Back in 2019, she had a hat trick at West Virginia as this one comes the other way as we're having some uh, back and forth here. Yeah, both teams are hungry. That's what you can see. Uh, for Coyman, it should be said, that's her eighth career goal. Good effort by Eva Steckelberg for the Cyclones. Herrera. Down the far side. Cyclone in the area, but not able to arrive on time. It's Treywick. Sends it west. 30 seconds to go here. One last throw in. Maybe.
And the clock ticks down the final seconds of what has been a very exciting match between two teams playing with the kind of motivation that comes with a teams out of chances. 2-2. Well, two, two. well, and being... Jorge Ramirez, the number one official here, as we get set to start the second half. And we are underway. I see Marina Suter Dorig starting the second half for Iowa State. As that ball is slotted through, Colbert, Jada, put it into the middle. And it will be Iowa State. So Iowa State will take some time here to set up a free kick. Baylor will set up a wall, and the wall is set to help make the, the goal smaller. So they essentially take care of one side of the goal for the goalkeeper, and you can see the goalkeeper is setting that wall. You know, the first goal of the game by Mira Emma was off of a deflection. Plays it short. But Pratt. Nicely done yeah. by the wall of just getting Pratt out there and putting get that, it. yeah, putting that pressure right away on Pratt. So if you're just joining us, Iowa State in the pink, recognizing Breast Cancer Awareness Month, bringing support to, to those affected by breast cancer. And the Cyclones. On the move. Nicely defended. Pratt kind of taken off the ball there. Here's Kennedy Adams. Tried to slot it through for Pratt. Didn't get there. Both teams trying to get out of the midfield here. And that was easily read by Ava Kohlberg, number 22 for Baylor. Soder Dorig, the Swiss national. Steckelberg, Dorig, and now she punches it down. Is Pratt going to get there? Well, she's going to get there, but not as fast as uh, Hallie Augustine. I'm surprised she didn't, she didn't make that effort to run that down, but that one-touch ball in behind is what created the space, and so I hope to see more of that from the Cyclones here in the second half. And ISU will play it in. This one just outside of the box. And Iowa State. I thought that was going to stay in by the way that it bounced. Nicely defended by Chloe Broughton. Had Colbert breaking. And here we go again. Pratt and Baylor will take it. About 42 degrees now. Really not much of any wind at this point. That could have been dangerous as Pratt was lurking at the top of the 18. Now Baylor's going to get a chance to take some initiative. <laughs> 
That ball bounced through. Look out. A save by Jordan Silkowitz. So nice deflection there. And Edwards. that's Coyman. Yep, Ed and actually I think that Edwards deflected that. Uh, well, here's a it. corner. Yep. So that was interference with the goalkeeper. That was a good call. Of course, Coyman has one the last the last goal of the first half the one that pulled her team level here's Pratt tried to pass it through to Jada Treywick plays it ahead Baylor's got some space. We're going to go the other way now. Edwards. second straight time that the Baylor back line has been able to just kick it back to Treywick. Well, and both Baylor and Iowa State used their goalkeeper very intentionally. Now, here's a turn with Baylor on the counter. Almost settled there by Vargas. Well defended by the Cyclones. Dilrig leaves it back for Hernandez. And now the Bears. Looking to slot that through. An open shot and over the crossbar. And hopefully we'll get to see a, a replay of that. Gabby Mueller, these bears are really dangerous because of their integrated play with each other. Look out, turnover. And that time, the shot by Blythe Obar. And I think Silkowitz got a finger on that. No, I think, it, I think she recognized she that it was Obar. high and wide. And there you saw some of the acrobatics, Jordan Silkowitz. Here comes Baylor. Patterson in the middle. Mueller. Oh, and she had Vargas lurking for that through ball. She did. I, I would say, though, that Iowa State defense, the, the back line, was very aware of where they were at and was able to pull the offsides trap. So that's where. Vargas was offsides in that position. Long ball. Colbert ends up going over the back of Treywick. And 
Again, Baylor will probe. Obar. And Iowa State will get it here. See Kennedy Adams. There's Eva Step Steckelberg, number 12. Lauren Hernandez, number 14, scored against Omaha earlier this year. It's kind of her breakout game. They're going to play this all the way back to Silkowitz. Nice one touch plays there, but just a little bit too close to the defender there in that last one. But that is what Iowa State is recognizing in how to get around Baylor and avoid that quick pressure. Euler. Baylor. Nice touch. Baylor on the run. Well defended by Iowa State. And kicked out. Baylor switching the point of attack. So here is Patterson. Pratt was on her. Ball didn't get through because it went off Vargas. And a missed touch there by Iowa State, Lauren Hernandez. Baylor is still in the attack. Coburg tried to slot it for Merrill. Augustine we will just kick it all the way back here and Abel's. The weave. You saw what Gabby Mueller is capable of doing with that ball. He said she can slice through defenders, and you just saw it. Play on. Coburg slots it. There's got to be pressure. We know that they can score. That was Obar. We know that Baylor can take really good shots from outside the box. There has to be pressure by the Cyclones in that space. Jordan Silkowitz. Got some shoe tying going on there. Well, when you have a broken hand, I think it's a little bit more difficult to accomplish that task Absolutely, on the field. Absolutely, no doubt. Talking about Salome Pratt. Talked about her from Tarbes, France. Only a half hour from the Pyrenees. Go up hiking up there. Only about 90 minutes from the beach. Wow. Couple substitutions for the Cyclones. Claudia Najira out. Maddie. Maddie Brant's coming back. Brant's back in. Yep. Another international player for the Cyclones. Kind of uh, had some uh, bad luck this season. Injury wise. Yeah, in the initial exhibition, about 18 seconds into it. I remember that. Um, really, you're thankful that she was able to get back at all. Oh There's boy. a turnover. Vargas leaves it. Kick now down to Patterson. The cross headed out. Pressure there. Coburg. Good save by Jordan Silkowitz for the Cyclones. So Baylor, so far, what well, we've played uh, 15, 15 minutes, minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, has had a little more of it here in the second half. 
Now this one's played through. Beautiful ball. Jada Colberg. Pratt plays it in. Was looking for Mira Emma. It didn't quite get there. Here's Vargas. Baylor effective, bringing it forward. Merrill. On the run, nice ball. It. That shot is blocked. I think that's the style of play that Coach Leonard has really infused into this Baylor team, looking for those crosses, like the crosses in the box and attacking the inline. Here comes Baylor. That was interrupted. Suter Dorig. And Pratt stays on it. Far side. Connell on the turn. Steckelberg. Iowa State's going to control that. Kick to the far side. Colbert was lurking, but it didn't get there. Here's a turnover. Played through. Nobody home. Now we'll come back the other way. Kennedy Adams. Pratt. Adams, the veteran. Baylor doing a nice job of just shifting over and keeping the play in front of them, re requiring Iowa State to go backwards. Now we got another air mail here. That's actually a really nice ball, and Iowa State will earn a corner. You called it, and Iowa State's last goal, the one that for a moment put them up two to one, came on a corner, Eva Steckelberg. So we'll see what they conjure up, the Cyclones. So some substitutions for the Baylor Bears. So Emma. Yeah, the Pratt's coming down there. So Pratt actually, I believe, is off the yeah, field. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I kind of realized that as I was saying it. Like, boy, I don't think you can score from there. This one kicked out. McConnell. Maddie Brandt kept it in. Steckelberg. Chloe Broughton. And Adams was going to wait for it to go out, and it didn't. Which was smart to not not try to defend that no. on the line without having Chloe Broughton back there as well. So just on that corner, pulling Chloe Broughton up, up top because of her effectiveness in the air, definitely have to be smart there. And that's where you see that veteran mentality because Kennedy Adams knows that, right? So she's able to play with that in mind. Steckelberg. Again, Brandt, and all the way back to Adams here. Down the near side, defended by Kohlberg. And good idea. Maddie Brandt will throw it in. Good idea playing in behind the defense. Jada. Back out to the top, Steckelberg. Playing it, Olivia Edwards. Puts it out on the far side. McConnell into the 18. I like her touch down to the inline because you can see how by forcing that inline play, you require 
the defense to either collapse or to give up a corner, and Iowa State has earned a corner, so nicely done by Lauren McConnell. I like that Iowa State has, uh, if you're a cyclone, you do, uh, reasserted itself a little bit. This one in the air, headed by Steckelberg into the scrum. That was close, that was a good play. Nicely done by Eva Steckelberg. That's why you see her on that far post, again, because of her effectiveness in the air. Trawick sends it out, but it's gonna be out of the reach of uh, Eva Kohlberg. So Maddie Brandt will throw it in. Herrera. McConnell. The battle won by Augustine. Baylor goes long. Kennedy Adams settles it down. Broughton. Well, it's tough when you hit those long through balls. It's tough to get it through the, the midfield here against Baylor. Now here's a chance. Kohlberg started, stopped, plays with it. Now fires it in. She had uh, people in the area, but Trawick played it on the bounce. Nice flick there by Baylor. Coyman. 50-50 ball. Plays it back. Herrera on the chase there for the Cyclones. Kohlberg gives chase. And Jada Kohlberg operating, trying to get through, goes down. And she does get a call. She had a nice touch around the defender with Kohlberg there but was fouled in that process. So here's the replay. So here's a nice touch back. And really, Kohlberg had no way to defend that besides fouling. Yeah, Augustine, yeah. Oh, I think it was 22. She was in there with Augustine. Gotcha. Yeah, Kohlberg was there too. So Iowa yes. State. Well, here we go. Good job by McConnell there to keep it in the yeah, and you never know end when, of the pitch. When you go in like that with your head, you don't know if you're going to get a foot to the face or what's going to happen, but you can see the grit that McConnell plays with. Well, and if she didn't and a Baylor player came out of there, they had all they had a lot the of space. Room yes, they the did. World. Yep, absolutely. Lots of pressure here by Iowa State. Trawick forced into something she really didn't want to do. Good pressure by the Cyclones, forcing some errors with Baylor's defense. Maddie Brandt. Could have had a bushel of minutes this year. Injury negated that, but she's back in the lineup. The chase on with Augustine and McConnell. Yeah, good shoulder to shoulder there. That's. Good positioning, and Baylor will get a goal kick. Baylor's doing a nice job of coming to the ball in the midfield, creating those passing channels. Here it is to Vargas, and now she leaves it. And the Bears will throw it in because right there for Baylor, Well, I don't think it was uh, Vargas. She left the pass. Trawick. Augustine. Puts it ahead.
far side, now down into the box. Well, that time, Sky Leach had a real viable chance to score. Yeah, so there was an offsides call, and Kennedy Adams was able to bring that to the center referee's attention. And here's Brandt. Lots of space. Nice switch of the attack. Colbert goes down. Oh. Play on. Augustine. Twin against twin there. Vargas. Check that. That was Leach. Baylor has played a lot of players here. Now Kohlberg. So that was a foul actually on Marina Suter Dorig. See her there on the logo. Now Iowa State tries to make the counter. McConnell is there in the 18. Couldn't make the turn. Oh, needed a one-touch shot right there. You can see the very intentional offense, even some direct play right there of just going straight from the back to the front line. Well, plus when you're on the turf, everything is accentuated because of the speed of the ball. Correct. Yeah, Maddie Brandt here on the near side, wide open. If Iowa State would have been able to switch that point of attack. Would have been putting her in a 1v1 situation. There's Michelle Leonard talking to her team. Michelle Leonard in her first year as head coach for the Baylor Bears. And over here to Colbert, but Maddie Brandt's gonna come up with this ball. Colbert. Patterson will play it immediately. No, she won't. Kohlberg will play it. Patterson steers out of some traffic. Kohlberg puts one in. The Cyclones kick that out. But Baylor comes again. Pass nice. interrupted. Yeah, nice def defense by Chloe Broughton there for the Cyclones. You can see Kohlberg's speed if she has the right amount of room. And this one's rejected. The Cyclones. I think here in the second half, Iowa State has done a better job of maintaining possession than Baylor. However, still a lot of turnovers on both teams. Mira Emma. Maddie Brandt is not going to be able to do anything with that. It's the right idea to switch the point of attack, just not in the right placement with positioning. Emma. Got there first. One of the things that we've talked about with Mira Emma, and you can see this right now, is her movement off the ball. Try to leave it for Leia Carey. No, that was Herrera. 
There's a shot in. And, and that's what I would like to see more of is the Cyclones taking that shot. Even Mira Emma pulling, pulling the trigger there at the top of the box rather than looking to sl slot that through. You know, be different in your offensive attacks. Fully capable of making that shot. But that's one of the things that Mira Emma is so good at is playing off the ball, creating opportunities, not just when she has the ball, but, but also when she's moving off the ball. Well, Colbert sends it east. It'll be played back by Steckelberg. Eva, one of the goal scorers tonight. Colbert, Patterson. Four against four. Good connections for the Cyclone defense there. Colbert. Colbert. Quickly took double the ball. team, too. Colbert. Morgan Grease Sage in there. She's had at least one shot. This one's going to go all the way back to Trawick. Trawick. comes Iowa State again looking for Emma Mira Emma it didn't get there and now Baylor looks for a through ball nice played in front Patterson on Patterson the run to run on to and a save by Silkowitz who's forced to go down and outstretch her right arm and make that play which will net a corner but that ball was on frame, so that w that would have been a goal without Jordan Silkowitz stretching out for this play right there. Nicely done by Jordan Silkowitz. Some chess moves here by both coaches. Ashley Merrill back in there. The time did not stop. Good and clear. That's on the eject button. So after the play, Chloe Broughton was fouled. Couple substitutions, both for Baylor and Iowa State. Both coaches have significantly utilized their bench. Augustine, back to Trawick. Colberg, Maddie Bratt, got her body on that one. Kohlberg sends it right back in. Merrill. She places it to the top of the 18. Edwards gets her foot on it. Kennedy Adams. And a nice play there by Mira Emma, who immediately. Yes, another veteran move there. That's Herrera with nobody home.
Treywick, Augustine. Kohlberg pushed ahead to Merrill. Nice job to keep it inbounds, but for not. Yeah, it looked like she kept it in, but it must have. Yeah, it must have just crossed the line there as it was in the air. Sophia Thomas in for the Cyclones for Marina Suter Dorig. Maddie Brandt on the ball. Herrera comes out with it. Back to Maddie Brandt. Well, miscommunication. Sophie Thomas was yeah. cutting there, but. Didn't connect on that play. No. Augustine. Kennedy Adams sends it the other way. And that'll be a Baylor. Both going for the ball, not malicious, but certainly a foul on Eva Steckelberg. Yeah, Maddie Algy there for Baylor. Yeah, both coming in for the ball, but late to the play. Nice ball. Iowa State and Baylor locked at two here. They've got 8.42 to settle it. And a new rule this year is that there is no overtime play at the end of 90 minutes. The only time it goes into overtime is in a tournament play where you must advance a team. Here's Baylor again. That one intercepted. Bears. Emma contests it. And now there's some room here. Over flies the women in green, but now they can reset with Kohlberg. Left out, shot, and that will be wide. And well defended by Jordan Silkowitz, understanding exactly where she was at and her goal. That's one of the things that she does really well is just her entire awareness of where she's at in the goal. So Baylor looking to do a quick restart, but Iowa State being able to come out onto that Blythe, play quickly. Yeah, Blythe Obar there. This corner's dangerous. That one headed out. And that is offsides. Nicely done by Iowa State defense pushing up quickly. And playing in possession out of the back. You can see that they do have a very different level of confidence than they ever used to play with under head coach Matt Fannin in that possession oriented style. Here's Brandt. Herrera couldn't get there. Here's Brandt again. Herrera tipped it over into the box and kicked out Sophie Thomas in the area. But here we go, and you see McConnell, her speed. But it looks like there will be a foul yes. on McConnell. Baylor will get the ball in their defensive half. Flicked ahead and sent back. And Iowa State will get it. 
thrown in. Baylor will play it back to Trawick. Playing pretty far outside of her box. Maddie Brandt. Turnover. Brandt. Left it for Herrera. Played it through. Didn't quite make it. Mira Emma had her foot on it. Kennedy Adams. Herrera. Brandt. To Herrera. Brandt again. Herrera. Mira Emma. Nice recognition of space. McConnell. That one's headed out. So some good good space and good passing by the Cyclones. You know, the next step is really making sure that you're playing it to a position where their first touch, the person that you're playing it to's first touch is in alignment with where they're going. That one cut off by Obar. There must have been a whistle that we couldn't hear because that was. We're down to four minutes. This is going to be a great uplifting win for the team that scores and a tough one to the deal one with doesn't. to the loser if this does not end in a draw. The other way. See, that ball should be played in behind or into space, especially with the speed of McConnell to play into. Brant challenges. Nice turn. Ashley And Merrill. here's Vargas. Look out. And a goal. Well, we talked about her and how she finds the right place at the right time. And so her second goal, Renetta Vargas with her second brace in three matches. And here's, you can see, it's just a one touch. She, that's what's effective with where she's at. I mean, she knows, she really has good positioning well, she and was presses that back line, and that's where she, you know her team can find her, and she's she's been able to do a really good job. Now has five goals in the last three games. Yeah, and another one late. So Iowa State has three minutes to answer. Vargas was the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week. And I don't think she wants to give it up. You know, you, you don't see her very active. Vargas is not real active in the play outside of that ball coming in behind. And, and you see it or being in that position right on the, the back line, that very high position on the back line. She kind of camps out there, but is very effective in knowing her positioning on the field and able to dish it off in one shot or in just one touch, taking a shot in one touch. On the turn, Mira Emma. Adams. Trying to get to Pratt. Looking to play that through ball in behind again. And that's, Vargas really does sit right in that pocket looking for that ball. And when she's played it, she can do some special things. Minute and a half. Iowa State. So at this point, Baylor's everything out. Everything is out. No questions asked. They're not looking to mess around. Protect their lead. Mira Emma got by one, but couldn't get the shot off. 
Broughton. In. There's a shot, but handled by Treywick. So Treywick Tray can keep the ball at her feet as long as she wants. She cannot hold on to it very long without a penalty. So now by playing it back on her feet, she cannot pick the ball back up. But that's why you put that pressure. So that was offsides by Pratt. So coming back to that play from an offsides position will give Baylor a free kick and they will count down these final seconds of the game. Another come from behind. And that will do it. And Renetta Vargas, really the it girl right now, the Big 12 in terms of her immediate impact.